record in the Judiciary Committee to wish Congressman Mel Watt well, uh, and uh, I will do so on the floor of the House. Uh, I am supporting this bill and, again, offer my appreciation uh, for the Crime Subcommittee's bipartisan effort to look into our problem with criminalization at the start of the Congress. But I am uh, concerned that there are a number of issues that were not discussed, but that this particular legislation uh, is an important step, which I know that Mr. Scott has worked on uh, quite extensively. The bill before us today does, uh, uh, works to, uh, in essence, uh, provide, requires, that, requires states that receive certain criminal justice assistance grants to report to the Attorney General on a quarterly basis certain information regarding the death of any person who is detained, arrested, en route to incarceration, or incarcerated in state or local facilities or a boot camp. H.R. 1447 also imposes penalties on states that fail to comply with such reporting requirements. The bill also requires the head of each federal law enforcement agency to report to the Attorney General annually certain information regarding the death of any person. My focus is to indicate that this is a practical initiative. Uh, I personally know that in jurisdictions in Texas, we have had incidences where individuals have gone into the county jail for minimal violations of the law and came out in a body bag. It happened to a mother of two sons who lost her life because an infected knee uh, was not taken care of or individuals who were ill, individuals who succumbed to inappropriate behavior by those who had charge over them. has happened in jails and prisons across America. This is a life-saving initiative because many people will acknowledge that uh, if you're incarcerated, even if you are there as in our county jails before you are convicted, uh, certainly uh, we recognize the criminal justice system, but it does not mean that you should lose your life. However, as we come to the end of this first year of the 113th Congress, I know my colleagues would recognize as well uh, that we are experiencing a one year of the tragic incidents that occurred at Sandy Hook. There will be those who will be mourning this afternoon, holding a memorial to acknowledge the tragedy of the lives lost. In this Congress, uh, to our dismay, we've not been able to pass the universal uh, background checks which could readily be on the floor of the House and be of value to those mourning mothers and fathers who now mourn one year later and ask the, que ask the question, why? Uh, in addition, we have seen over the last year, uh, in many of our jurisdictions, uh, the excessive violence that has taken up our young people through gun violence, uh, through uh, gangs, and other actions uh, that would welcome uh, this Congress exercising its authority on issues dealing with anti-violence, anti-bullying, of course, and again, uh, the ceasing of gun violence. I look forward to establishing a commission in my community uh, responding to the incidences of 19 individuals being shot and two teenagers being killed, uh, a young man from Jack Yates High School being killed, and another young man shot in a park. And so as I rise to support this legislation, I would simply argue as we move forward on this legislation that there's work to be done, and I hope we can join together in a bipartisan manner to do so. I hope my colleagues will vote and support H.R. 1447. I yield back. Time, gentlemen, has expired. Gentleman from Georgia.